Hi everyone. All right, welcome. Welcome to now. Um, I don't know who's reading this is for yet. We're gonna roll the dice and see, but whoever it is, I have to share this. I I saw someone who was like rubbing their thighs. Um, probably like a kind of self-soothing uh, energy, um, but also a little excited. Uh, and then I I saw someone be like, I want a hug. <laughs> like maybe someone needs a hug. Uh, maybe you need a hug. Maybe you're the somebody. Um, what was another thing? Oh, there was this song too. It was like, and I'm not a good singer, so we're just going with it. It's, it was just like, cleaning out the old, making space for the new. That is the song and what you're meant to do. So maybe a little spring cleaning wouldn't be bad. Uh, let's see who this is for. Oh, Taurus, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday to us oh my god those of you who have been here do you remember that reading it was like a couple years ago and not even anywhere close to your birthday it was just 111 and it was like happy birthday so apparently you're in a good mood you've been waiting for this haven't you god you've been waiting like years good okay you're fine you're better than fine you're good <laughs> you're good Okay, so we have five cards. You love that number. Um, that one goes in the middle. You got it. All right, let's see. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, we got an air moon. Ooh, two air moons. Okay, we have a waning and a waxing. Waning and a waxing, right? One, like two, two crescent moons. <laughs> I see the color yellow is also really highlighted here. So, all right, so there could be, let me, let me focus, let me gather myself before we jump fully in here. I want to set a good, in, I mean, we already have our intention set, right? But maybe needed some kind of signal, um, like a double signal. I just saw like a yellow flashing light, right? Where it's kind of like, you know, when you're crossing the road, you always look both ways before you go, right? You don't just look one way. You want to look, you want to look both ways Two. So maybe there's something about two signals, two signals, double confirmation. Um, okay. Let's open up the rest of your cards and see. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm choosing these cards, like, I've never put these all together in this way, so... But they go together. But it's a new... It's kind of like a new situation. So, Taurus. Um, Alright, this is... Regardless of how you're watching this. Right now, the sun, which is an energy of, to some, the soul. It's an energy of vitality, of creation. Um, is is in the your Taurus space. Wherever this is in your map, there's light there. Right? Now, this creates a new... Until, from now until next year, there's a new, a whole new cycle, right? <clears throat> so, let's, let's start this out practically so you can recognize your own, I heard your own strength and your own value. The first card you have is actually this waning moon, right? When something is waning, <clears throat> we have the card, it's entitled Challenge. So, what challenges have you overcome in the last year? You could even be just from the beginning of this year, but really like the last year, some of you, this is, this is like six years ago because Taurus energy moves slower. You know what I mean? So you have to really, it helps you to understand again, when, when you have to go over something a couple times, a couple few, many times, right? It, it'll help you to be like, oh wait, no, I did. I did good with that. You know? Like you need proof, I heard need proof in the pudding. Now what's cool about this, because 
because this is I'm almost seeing this in a present once you get that out of not necessarily out of the way it's more of an acknowledgement once that happens then what this is going to do is help you to understand how good you are at dealing with challenges right and because I feel like then this year is a little bit of challenging yourself you know it's it's that because sometimes sun uh can be a competitive energy you know but really you're just competing with yourself so so remember that you don't have to compete with anybody else you know whatever you do i mean do your best but i feel like taurus always does their best venus energy always wants to do its best it feels obligated to do that but it has to also get out of its little comfort zone sometimes too right and again not see the change as a challenge because really all you're doing again i see is challenging yourself and some of you this could have to do with work or just your day-to-day -day, like how you do your day-to-day -day, right um now what's cool about this is the card that comes after that is adaptability which then we move into this waxing energy which is actually really beautiful right so being able again to adapt to challenges i'm seeing this word challenge in a really really positive way it's like i heard i'm up for the challenge you know it's like friendly competition or like friendly oh you're learning to be your friend better your own friend good good because you know what when you do that seven minutes even then your relationships with others are they don't repeat the challenges of the past because well it's no i see it's no longer relevant because like the lesson's been been made aware of put in the right places okay now you also have you have empress um it didn't have to be a major it is this can be your energy um the lynx is also here lynx are very very independent people i love that i call animals people <laughs> it's because i don't separate <clears throat> you know like you're something's in the less than category it's like no we're all in the, it's all in the same plane of existence right um let's read about lynx i mean i i know a little bit about it maybe that's a good thing hey grandpa um you know empress is very creative taurus to me also immensely creative sign right very self-sufficient um <clears throat> and also willing to work with others because you're a domesticated animal most of the time so that's a beautiful quality you know some people are that they, they don't work well with others so know who you're working with also okay just be aware of that like if if there's a challenge if there's something that comes up that's that's something where you're trying to adapt to it and for some reason um it doesn't tend to mesh together it's not always easy right sometimes we gotta again there's challenges but if you keep trying and it keeps just headbutting then remember that lynx is representing individuality and understanding that it's okay to have a difference of opinion or what have you you know i heard you don't have to explain everything to why um empress is also very uh self-respecting right she's very self-respecting this is this is super high um high level like divine feminine if you will you know it's it's female energy which is again creative and loving and all this not the masculine isn't loving and creative it very much is but this is on that side of it more moon energy 
I suppose this could have to do with women in your life also, like other women in your life. I just opened up to Ladybug. In this deck, that represents a miracle, but sometimes it comes in, like, different, um, you know, your power of prayer is really strong, um, especially when it has to do with nature or, like, the natural process of things, okay? Um... Oh, let's take a breath. Remember, you're Earth. You need air. We were talking really fast there, right? You're excited, which is cool. Uh, here we go. So Praying Mantis comes after uh, Phoenix, and Phoenix comes after Lion. So this is Leo, Scorpio. We have two fixed. Now we're in Praying Mantis. <clears throat> it says, here's a meditation for praying mantis who 11 11. I love all these synchronicities. It says, difficult to spot as she rests in the leaves. Praying mantis is revered for her ability to remain still. When she does move, she steps deliberately. Nothing is done without intuitive verification. Oh, here we go which assures her safety and success. In this way, Praying Mantis communes with the otherworldly modalities of truth. In her world, the unforeseen does not exist. Rooted in the stillness of her rumination, she remains open and certain, open and certain a prophet of tranquility. Says praying mantis appears when the medicine of meditation is most required. The more complex life becomes, the more you will benefit from the truth offered uh, by this by this medicine. It says the price for this wisdom <clears throat> is to immerse yourself in the calm waters. I feel like those are waters, right? In the calm waters that exist beneath the waves of worldly distractions. It says, please make space for your voice within to speak. Which I, you had this old reading too called Excellent Decisions, Water and Wine. And it spoke about how Taurus, you have this little, you're speaking to the collective too, but like how you, there's this little voice inside of you. And all you have to do is ask. Should I work with that person? Should I call that person? Should I answer the phone? Is this a good time to go to the store? What, what am I supposed to focus on today, right? It's basically just confirming again with spirit. Like you may know in yourself already, like, okay, I, I want to do this or I need to do that. But then this, again, sort of like we mentioned, like this double confirmation, this will help you it says, Praying Mantis will guide you towards the stillness and clarity, for this is her territory. Um, I think this will also help you, again, if there's any challenges that you are adapting to. Because, again, challenge to me, is I'm seeing this as such a positive energy. It's just, I feel like it's more than anything challenging yourself. To maybe be a little bit more adaptable to something. Um, and you know what's interesting? Look at these two cards. So they show the moon cycles on the bottom. So the challenge is, is half moon, right, uh, on one side. The adaptability is half moon on the other side. So... Libra is always a great lesson to you. I suppose this is your relationships too. Um, Libra is also a little bit more business because they're um, connected more to Saturn. So it's really like seeing different, different sides of the equation, right? 
this could also be where two separate things, if there is an awareness around the adaptability, again, to whatever the challenge is internally, externally, because we have to, what am I seeing? It's like, you know, a little bit of conflict, right? Mars, your opposite sign. A little bit of conflict, a little bit of stress, a little bit of fear, like just little bits, a little bit of friction can actually be very creative, right? Passion actually comes from friction, right? Art comes from, sometimes art, think about how many beautiful love songs or poetry or um, truth comes to be known because Mars is involved, because there's a kind of like, something feels a little uncomfortable, so there's a lot of creation that can come from that. Now, I see you want to keep aware though in your body with this empress card she's very she's very in tune because she's all the feminine she's very in tune with her own body and she has a a a an awareness of that which is outside of her and how that reflects back into her and affects can affect how she feels or how to again adapt to it right sometimes the adaption is oh i'm going to embrace this and and understand what this is teaching this outside of me is teaching me about inside of me sometimes the adaption would be like <laughs> you know like duck and move duck and move like getting out of the fucking way okay and then i heard we'll deal with that another day but I heard, don't put too much on the back burner, right? Because you'll you'll see uh, what what that's about. You know, links to to close this out just as a little topic page marker. Empress is very motherly. Lynx, the way I saw it first, is feminine. The lynx is, um, really spends a lot of time by itself, males and females. Um, but the females, the females rear the children, the, the cubs, and they teach them, the mother teaches the children how to, like, uh, survive. It teaches them how to hunt. It teaches them where to put their food. It teaches them how to take care of themselves. So that could also be something that would be helpful. Um, I suppose this could just be, we could go way back to your mom and you as a kid and what you learned from that could be helpful about independent. How, what What is independent about your mother and how can you embrace that uh, positively? And realize that's a part of you too and then maybe also just like independent mm, what's the word well i see this is being understanding and receptive to who people are and how they do what they do and being very aware and clear of that. There's no illusion around it. It's very obvious. And regardless of what you're involved with, whenever you're involved with it, it's like being able to hold your own position and making it very easy on like, again, who you're supposed to work with or create with or where you're supposed to go, right? Empress and Lynx are also very beautiful energy, super beautiful energy. Uh, this is, I suppose, is also Cat, which is Leo, and Praying Mantis is Insect, so Scorpio. So these two are important. Um, I guess this is. Oh, the cat just went up the ladder. Cute. Um, yeah, exploratory energy exploratory energy uh this is the depths of love in your soul and for some of you it could be where you may be considering something different about love uh 
you know, say, say, I guess we'll close it like this, 20 minutes. Like if you're a female or more feminine energy, an overly independent female can have deep connections, but it only goes so far, right? has to be receptive so maybe some of you were just perceiving relationships a little bit better or or more in the way you know of of what you are wanting because this has a lot to do with well i'm seeing the numbers six and two and I guess we have a three here also. What is that? Eleven? So these are your groups, your circles of people could be another way for you to, you know, maybe some of that, some of that adaptability is like getting involved in like new groups or it just immersing yourself again in something. And remember with praying mantis to sit in Empress, links to very, um, they observe before they pounce which actually the praying mantis what we mentioned sounded a bit like taurus to me it's calculated right hi cat <laughs> but also i see fearless because when your love when your love is strong then and real i see then you don't have to worry about anything i mean you still want to check in Right? Sometimes Taurus is attracted to something because it's pretty or because it feels good to be in that. But you got to double check sometimes to what's beyond what you can just see. And that's where that meditation and I see feeling into your body will help you a lot. I would also say in your in your alone time, in your regardless, you could be a mom, you could be a parent, you have a whole family dynamic, even that. Make sure that you're taking time alone, uh, not only to pray, but also to, to create. Right, and I heard, ask yourself what you're wanting now because the sun energy for the next year is, it's starting here in this Taurus space, right? Which is really beautiful. Okay, that's that. Hope you have a good month and happy birthday uh, to all of you. Happy birthday, Taurus. Um, I love May. May's a pretty time. It's a pretty time. All right. I'll talk to you next time. Peace out.